Everybody, Thursday, February 29th, John Aravosis here with the Aravosis Report, coming to you live from Washington. Which camera am I using? I am using the right camera. Okay, was just checking. <laughs> just, I have like multiple cameras on my computer and it's very confusing. Anyway, welcome folks. Uh, let me pull up the chat box so I can see you all. And then we'll get TikTok rolling. There we are. There we are. Hello all. Oh, okay, still waiting for the chat to come up. I will see you guys. There, there you go. Okay, now I see you guys. Hey, guys. How are we all? Happy Thursday. Very exciting. Oop, there we go. Live, live, live. Ah, there we go. Now I got you. Oh, hello, everybody. All right, guys, let me get TikTok rolling, and then we are ready. All right. Flip my camera. Boom. Excellent. All right. Hi, y'all. I'm still kind of working on the lighting, as you can see. It might be a little red today on YouTube. I don't know. It's hard to figure out. Anyway, I do what I can. These cameras are very difficult. Um, I'm going to try one more time here. Oh, gain maybe? No. I can never tell. I don't know. Anyway, hey, TikTokers. How are you guys? YouTubers. At least I was able to get that little thing on the screen back that I somehow lost. Thank you, Lori. How are you? Hey, Crazy American. Thanks for the gifts. So hello, everybody. It is Thursday, February 29th. I am John Aravosis. Welcome to the show. Uh, this is the Aravosis Report, my nightly show about Ukraine and also U.S. politics, but mostly Ukraine. Tonight, all Ukraine, I think, pretty much. Thanks, John S. Uh, so how are folks doing? As always, like to maybe wait half a minute or a minute. So my bio is on the page. I don't even know. Is my bio on my, my bio, your bio on your page? I'm not sure what you mean, Ash. <laughs> not sure what you mean, but glad you noticed it. Um, hey, me, me and Saint, how are you? Thank you, Mustard. So that's what the, I was wondering what the singing frogs looked like. Thank you for that. Thank you for the heart as well. Um, hello, Lord, Lord, Lord. I'm not going to say your name in Australia. How are you? Hey, Mark, how are you doing? Ukraine is hanging in there. Um, you know, we'll talk about it during the show. I mean, basically, basically, Russia is whittling away at Ukraine. They are they are going after little towns and taking little towns. And it's still bad news because, you know, you'd rather be winning little towns than losing little towns. Thank you, Russell. You know, the good news is they're little towns, but still, you know, if you're Ukraine, you want to be winning rather than losing, even if it's by small amounts. So, um, you know, it's not good, <clears throat> but hopefully the U.S. will finally get its act in gear and start giving aid to Ukraine again. Hopefully the Europeans will step up more. We'll see, you know. Hey, Kitchen in Seattle, how are you? All right, guys, I will get rolling here. So welcome. I am John Aravosis. Thank you, Jeff. This is the Aravosis Report, my nightly show I do Monday to Friday, 6 o'clock Eastern Time U.S., where we talk about the latest news from Ukraine. Uh, quick reminder, Saturday morning, I've got my coffee talk or my coffee talk, as I call it, for the TikTokers. Uh, it's a weekend show I do for the monthly subscribers as a thank you. These are the folks who are the subscribers on TikTok. Some of the mods can tell you how to do it. Or you can go to my profile on TikTok, see the thing that says live subscription. And basically, it just means you give me a monthly donation. On TikTok, it might be $5.99 a month, I think. TikTok takes a lot of it, but it still helps me out. Thank you, Joker. And as a thank you, you get lots of little emojis, but you also get to join our Saturday morning show, 11 o'clock Washington, D.C. time. That's 11 a.m. New York City time. The rest of you, same thing. For you guys, it's uh, Twitch, Discord, Kofi, or YouTube. Any of you guys, monthly subscribers, can join us um, on Discord, where I will have the, the Hangout at the same time, sort of simulcast on both. So, yes, I keep playing with the lighting. Thanks for noticing. Who was that, Anthony? I keep playing with the lighting because it's hard to get the, uh, it's hard to get the color correct. If I go for less color, I'll show you with the white balance. If I go for a little less, oops, hold on here. It then starts to turn me purple. Yeah, see, so I can't, I, I can't win with this. So I'm leaving it where it is, little orange, but it's better than purple. All right, guys, uh, let me get rolling. So today is day 733 of Vladimir Putin's special three-day military operation in Ukraine. Um, the uh, little kind of news about USAID, it's a little weird. 
Um, what's going on with U.S. aid to Ukraine? As you know, Republicans in Congress have cut 100 percent of U.S. aid to Ukraine. It's all gone. Zero is coming in now from the American government because Donald Trump told them to cut it. Um, Trump, as you know, has got some weird uh, connection with Putin in Russia. Whether Putin is blackmailing him, whether Putin is bribing him, we don't know. But Trump has a, a, a very wrong connection with Putin and ordered uh, ordered the uh, Congress, his Republicans in Congress, thank you for the gift there, Jimmy, ordered Republicans in Congress to uh, stop helping Ukraine and to start helping Russia, and they are. Um, so supposedly, uh, according to Voice of America, the Republican Speaker of the House, who's, um, who's Trump's guy, said that the chamber, the House, would consider $60 billion in aid for Ukraine as soon as the government is funded. Now, as you know, or you may not know, we are in yet another sort of showdown on the budget in Congress. The issue is if they don't pass some legislation soon to fund Congress, uh, it's there's going to be another government shutdown because the Republicans aren't passing the spending bills in the House. So that has to happen pretty soon. And if that does, he's claiming that we will then, you know, address the Ukraine bill. I'm not convinced, uh, but let's see what happens. I, I, I think he's playing games. I, I think what I think is, and I've been seeing this now for a few weeks, I think Republicans in Congress are actually worried about Ukraine. Um, and what I mean by that is they're worried politically. We saw in the U.S. Senate that uh, Senate Republicans got together and passed a Ukraine aid bill anyway, even though House Republicans said don't do it, even though Donald Trump said don't do it. The Senate Republicans joined the Democrats in passing the bill. When I saw that, I thought it looked like Republicans were worried about the political fallout. Thank you, running, of not helping Ukraine. Thank you, Elizabeth. I did see, sorry, there were a number of little gifts too. Martina, World, Marcy, Jimmy, Jimmy again, Joker. Okay, I did see a couple when I was speaking. Jeff, do you want to miss you guys? Russell, Jen, there were a lot of you guys. Mark, thank you guys, appreciate it. Um, so yeah, I've got to thank you, Jen and Martin and Ash. Um, I have a feeling that that Republicans in Congress are a little afraid of the Ukraine stuff blowing up in their face. They're a little afraid of Ukraine actually losing and Republicans being to blame. Now, I'm not quite sure who they think is going to blame them. Uh, Republicans have pretty much convinced their base that, thank you, Elizabeth, have convinced their base that Vladimir Putin walks on water and Ukraine is evil. So, I, right, I mean, I, it's a little confusing to me. I mean, they are to blame, yes, mustard, but but who they're afraid of angering, right? Thank you, running. I mean, Republicans have clearly convinced their their base that Vladimir Putin is right. America's wrong, Russia's right. Tucker Carlson's a perfect example. So, like I said, I'm just I, I, I am sensing that that the MAGA Republicans, some of them at least, like like well, the the Republicans in general in the U.S. Senate but even the MAGA Republicans like Johnson, thank you running for the gift, are starting to get worried about this blowing up in their face. In any case, so Johnson's talking about, oh, there'll be a vote, there'll be a vote. Um, there was also a report today I saw that at least one Republican member of the House is planning on introducing a discharge petition. This is very complicated congressional procedure stuff, but basically a discharge uh, petition is a way of forcing the party in power of holding a vote on legislation. Now, typically, you would need, not typically, you would need a majority vote to basically, okay, you, you, it is a way of, of forcing a vote to force a vote. <laughs> so what I mean is, in the House, we want the House to debate and vote on aid to Ukraine. We know that if it came up, there would be enough Republicans to join Democrats to pass aid to Ukraine. The House Republican leader who controls the House is a MAGA guy, Mike Johnson. Thank you, Jane. He is saying, no, I'm not going to bring the legislation up pretty much because Donald Trump told him not to, right? The legislation can be forced to come up anyway over his objections, but you need 218 votes to do it. Well, because Democrats are the majority, are the minority, Democrats don't have 218 votes. Republicans are the majority. Thank you, Succeed. Republicans have 218 votes, but you would need like every Republican practically to vote. And why would the Republicans vote to uh, basically overrule their own speaker? 
right? Republicans would have to vote to overrule their own Republican leader who is saying, don't bring the bill up for a vote. Well, what's happening now, thank you, JRD, is at least one Republican member of Congress has said in the House, he's going to do it. He's sick and tired. He wants a vote on aiding Ukraine. Thank you, Vicky. And he is going to uh, promote, he's going to put the discharge petition in. He says there are other Republicans who will vote with him. Now, this could take 30 days to, to ripen. I mean, it, it's a whole procedure, but it's very interesting that they're talking about doing that. Um, let's see what happens. I mean, but, you know, um, oh, shoot, I've got the guy's name. I don't have it in front of me right now. He's a House Republican. He might be from Pennsylvania. I, I'm trying to remember. I don't remember exactly where he was from. I, do, I didn't have it in front of me. Sorry, guys. Um, let me see here real quick. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Sword for Justice asks, as, the, as Ukraine aid is a matter of international diplomacy and only Congress is permitted to perform it and Trump is currently a private citizen, why is Trump involved? Well, isn't that the question? Thank you, Macabre. Trump is involved because Republicans are scared to death of Donald Trump because Donald Trump has a movement that has scared Republicans. Donald Trump has a movement that turns up and votes, the MAGA people. He has a movement that is somewhat violent. They did try to violently overthrow the government. They routinely make violent threats against public officials. And uh, numbers of members of Congress have said this, that, that they basically, well, the ones who quit, Republicans said they got sick and tired of the threat. There were threats against their families. So if you're a sitting Republican, you know that if Donald, if you disagree with Donald Trump, you could lose your seat. And for these guys, having their seat is everything, right? They want their job. Your family is going to be threatened, right? By crazy people from around the country. Why, why do it? So I, I, I would compare it to the mafia. Donald Trump is the mafia boss, okay? What power does the mafia boss have? Well, he's got whatever power you, he's got whatever power he's got. <laughs> Donald Trump has a lot of power to screw people over, you know? And some of it's self-inflicted because they've imposed it on themselves. Now, mods, that would be, bingo, thank you. I was going to say TikTok mods, that would be an example of somebody I would get rid of. <laughs> so <laughs> we were having a debate about moderation because it's always very difficult for us because we get so many trolls, guys, especially the Russians. We get so many Russian trolls coming, people that the Russians have clearly sent, that it can be very difficult to figure out, thank you, Parda, kind of, who, who, is, who is basically a Russian trying to disrupt the chat and who isn't. So it can be difficult to sort of figure it out sometimes. So, so bear with us because sometimes we'll block you or mute you when we, maybe we shouldn't have. But it's, as we said, we get so many of the bad guys that, that, that in order to make this uh, a pleasant experience for the rest of you, we're always having to patrol who, who's coming and who's kind of stirring up trouble. So anyway, um, so yeah, that, that's why Donald Trump has power because he scared the hell out of Republicans and his movement is somewhat violent. And that's a that's a combination. That's a combination that works in fascism in, in America, too, sadly. Um, Putin today. So Putin today threatened to nuke France, kind of. Um, in response to I had talked yesterday about um, Callum should be here today. I was just chatting with him. Is he hiding? I don't know. He's he's around. I was just chatting with him. Um, we were talking yesterday about how uh, the French president Macron had. Thank you, Sophia. Um, French President Macron had said that NATO was discussing sending troops to Ukraine, but there wasn't a consensus yet, um, you know, et cetera, right? So it was, it was very weird. We were all kind of scratching our head going, what is he talking about, <laughs> right? Um, what I read between the lines of what, of what we were hearing was that basically we know Macron had 20 NATO leaders come our European leaders come to Paris this week to talk about helping Ukraine. What Macron was saying to my ear was some of the countries represented, thank you, adventurers, want to send troops to Ukraine. Um, many of the rest do not. So Macron said, truthfully, there isn't a consensus. But he also said, I'm not, we're not going to take it off the table. We're, so in other words, it, it is always a possibility for the future. That was interesting. Um, it freaked out some countries like Germany. Germany came out and said, no, it's not. We're not doing it. You know, Biden also freaked out. We're not doing it. You know, this kind of stuff. Right. So a lot of countries felt the need to say, no, 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 we're not sending troops. Um, Putin yesterday gives his big address to Cong to his parliament. 
and brings it up. And of course, Putin being Putin, he had to threaten nuclear war because that's who Putin is. Um, very insecure. Very, as I've always said, you know, the, the, the bully who has to keep telling you how strong he is, is weak, right? Everybody know, I mean, the U.S. has nuclear weapons. When have you ever heard the U.S. threaten to use nuclear weapons? You don't. When have you heard the British or the French threaten to use their nuclear weapons? You never do. Everybody knows we have nuclear weapons. Everybody knows we will use our nuclear weapons if we are attacked with nuclear weapons. We don't need to say it. The fact that Putin, and this is, I mean, guys, this is the hundredth time these Russians have done this. The fact that Putin has to say, and we have nuclear weapons and we will use them if we have to, to me means, A, no, you won't use them. You're lying, probably. And B, why are you so insecure? Just, and honestly, it's not just insecure. It's, it's immature insecure, which I find fascinating, right? There's an immaturity to it. This sort of sense of, of and, and I'm going to use them, I'm going to use them, right? As if you're like, it's almost like a, a child kind of, you know what I mean? Like there, there's just a mature adult wouldn't talk. It's, oh, it's irresponsible as well, Russell. Absolutely. It's very irresponsible, but it's also just very immature. Um, in any case, so Putin did it again. He did his BS. I don't know if I pulled the quote. I didn't even put the quote down. He just did his BS quote again about, we have nuclear weapons. We will use them and you won't like it. <sighs> For brevity, let me say one more time. <laughs> Thank you, Kim. And, and again, I hate sort of getting into this topic because it's such BS from the Russians, but they have nuclear weapons. If they use their nuclear weapons, we'll use our nuclear weapons and we will wipe them off the map, period. The French will use their nuclear weapons and wipe Russia off the map, and the British will use their nuclear weapons and wipe Russia off the map. Nobody wants that to happen because it would be a global thermonuclear war and we'd all die. The point is, if Russia uses its nukes, we will destroy Russia with ours, and they know it. That is why Russia will not use its nukes, at least against us. They won't. Now, Russia could use their nukes against Ukraine. That's a different story. We've talked about that. Now, that is all going to... And that is all going to depend on a whether it's whether it's useful for Russia to use the nukes and honestly I think it's useful for Russia to threaten nukes it's not useful for them to use them the defense experts have said from the beginning there's really no benefit to Russia using nukes there just isn't in Ukraine like it, it doesn't give them a military benefit. It's not like, oh, all the Ukraine, you know, all the 200,000 Ukrainian troops are going to stand in one spot like the Russians seem to always do. And we're going to drop a nuke on them and kill them. all. <laughs> it just doesn't work that way. Right. There's really no military benefit. The best benefit for Russia is constantly threatening to use nukes because who does it scare? Macron, Biden and Schultz, the French, the German and the American governments who we know have been too afraid from the beginning of making Vladimir Putin angry, of escalation, you know, and you know the wine, right? Thank you, adventures. I just still get such a kick out of that bear. Um, so in any case, he's threatening again. Ignore the man. I, you know, that's all I can say. Just ignore the man. <laughs> Thank you, Jess Aflac, for the duck. Anyway, um, it's just ridiculous. How many of ours? What do you mean, nukes? I think we've got four or five thousand. Although we've got a fewer number that are like active or some such thing. The point is with nukes, especially, um, thank you, pediatric nurse. And thank you, Dory. We have, um, we've got nuclear weapons on submarines. So do the Brits and the French. Thank you, Terry. That's what's most dangerous for Russia. Thank you, user 211. That basically, if the Russians attacked us and blew everything up, right? Just destroyed all of America. What would survive would be our nuclear submarines. It's just, it's next to impossible to find and hit nuclear submarines. Our nuclear submarines would then respond and destroy Russia. Where do you think France and Britain's nuclear weapons are? On their own nuclear submarines. Russia could literally obliterate all of our countries and our response would be to obliterate them with our nuclear weapons on our submarines. And there's nothing they could do to stop it. It's an ugly business, but the point is Russia knows it, and that's why Russia is never going to attack us with their nuclear weapons because they may be stupid, but they're not stupid, right? So again, they're doing this for show. They're doing it for, yeah, it's exactly mad theory. They're doing it for show. They're doing it to scare you. They're doing it to scare our governments. You know, I mean, that's, that's the bottom line of what they're doing, you know? Um, now, Jesse, you, on the other hand, are going to take a little mute walk. That's for sure. Mods, feel free to get rid of Jesse. Um, 
like I said, I'm trying to sort of do a lighter hand on moderating because it's hard for the mods having to sort of, you know, there's so many trolls all day long. But nonetheless, occasionally people are kind of rude. And I think I don't I don't like the rudeness thing. So um, in any case. All right. What else we got, guys? Um, oh, Ukraine today. So Ukraine today shot down three Su-34 fighter jets, um, fighter bombers of the Russians, three of them. These are like thirty five million dollar, thirty nine million dollar planes, which means basically Ukraine blew up $120 million of Russian planes today. Thank you, Ellie. Um, they have blown up, I believe, 12 of these planes this month in, in February alone of the Su-34s. We also know that Ukraine blew up uh, just recently. Thank you, Crystal. That Ukraine blew up just recently. Um, thank you, Liv. Uh, another A-50. Thanks, Mustard. The A-50 are the basically AWACS the uh, surveillance planes that are very, they're the, the planes, I always say, they're the planes that have like a flying saucer on top, right? The sort of flat flying saucer, uh, copy of the American AWACS, basically. And the, um, they're very expensive. They're half a billion dollars, so $500 million for these planes. They've got a crew of 15. These are the, the, the other planes that, that Ukraine blew up a couple days ago. Um, a crew of 15 people, which is a lot, um, thank you, Sherry, because they all get killed when the plane goes down, right? Thank you, Bryce. They all get killed. Um, that's a lot of men and women who have been trained for years on how to basically do this electronic spying and they're gone. Um, so Ukraine blew up the second, uh, shot down the second A-50 plane. The first one was last month. The second one was this month. They've shot down, like we said, 11 or 12 others of these Su-34 fighter bombers. They are doing really well and it's very... I mean, it's a little weird. I was talking with Callum about this earlier and we were trying to kind of figure out what's going on. And I'm not really sure, guys. Um, I remember with, I think it was the A-50. I remember with the A-50 the first time last month and it and another plane were shot down. And I think it was either that or the next day they shot down even more planes. And I said, what's going on? I just had a feeling like something changed. Like, why is it that suddenly the Russians are, are losing all these planes, right? And now especially, they're losing a lot of planes. Um, you know, one possibility is that Ukraine has actually gotten the F-16s. The only thing is, I feel like that's a hard thing to hide. You know, an F-16 flying around, people would see it. But again, Ukrainians would see it. Ukrainians would hear it. Um, Russians, would, Russians would probably mention it, right? It just seems weird. But, you know, Patriot missiles, maybe. Um, the, the, and I read something today saying, you know, it's possible the Ukrainians are being uh, gutsier with the Patriot missiles and taking more risks. And maybe they're moving the Patriots right to the battle line in front. Right. I, I don't know. But something weird is going on. Something weird. Uh, Finland's coming up. I'm going to praise Finland in a little bit. <laughs> uh, don't worry. Um, I mean, something weird in a good way. But all I mean is I feel like something's changed on the battlefield and we don't know what it is, which is very interesting. Right. It's good, though. It's very good. But yeah, Russia's running out of their best pilots. Absolutely, Tree. I mean, this is and this is something you've got to keep in mind. Thank you, Tom, is every time a piece of equipment is blown up, whether it's a tank or a plane or a radar system, you're not just blowing up the machine. But at least when it comes to Russian equipment, you're also blowing up the men and women who operate it. You know, mostly men in Russia's case, Super Hornet. Uh, thank you, Super Hornet and Tom, right? And those are people who have possibly spent years training on this stuff. You know, Ukraine, it depends. You blow up a Ukrainian plane, you're killing pilots. You blow up Ukrainian tanks and personnel carriers, the Western ones tend to survive. Thank you, Cheryl. So you've got a much higher survival rate of the Ukrainian crews, the Ukrainian military men and women who are in the personnel carriers and the tanks that we're giving them. Right. So that's good. In the Russia's case, you've seen the Russian ones, the Russian tanks, literally the top of the tank gets blown off. I mean, it's, it's kind of a magnificent, scary looking thing. Um, the, the top of the tank, like, oops, <laughs> I know you saw it. I just wanted to use the I just wanted to use the goat. The goat is what we use occasionally when I see when I see really obvious trolls, meaning people who are like someone came in and they had a Russian flag in their name. Uh, and it said, you are liars. <laughs> that is clearly not somebody who's simply disagreeing. Thank you, Marie. So we use the, the Greek goat whenever I see somebody who's a really obvious over-the-top Russian troll. They get the goat. The goat. Um, 
in any case, so yes, Ukraine's done a great job uh, shooting down Russian planes. Uh, Alexei Navalny. So Alexei Navalny is the Russian opposition leader. Thank you, Adity, who his funeral is tomorrow um, outside of Moscow. He was murdered by Putin. Terry investigated and found that, in fact, it was Novichok. It was a Soviet nerve agent that Putin has used before. Thank you, Charles, to kill his enemies. Well, this time he succeeded in killing Navalny. Again, top opposition leader in Russia. He then, Putin, holds on to the body and refuses to give it to Navalny's mother and says, thank you, Crystal. Thank you, Tom. And says that I am not giving you the body unless you promise to have a private funeral because we don't want him to be a martyr, right? We don't want all the millions of Russians showing up, etc. His mother, Navalny's mother says no. So Putin refuses to release the body. The mother says the body is now starting to decompose, presumably because the, Putin was refusing to let them put the body in the freezer or the fridge because he wanted to put, he was using the body decomposing to put pressure on the mother, okay? Pressure on the mother. There you go. Thanks, mods. Thank you, Jay Ticker. Right? I mean, horrific thing to do. Thank you, R19. I mean, imagine, imagine letting a body go bad in order to punish the guy's mother. Like, what? And, and, and Putin calls himself the big Christian. You can't imagine something being less Christian. In any case, finally, gives him the body. What happens next? Uh, Russian government basically tells funeral homes across Russia, don't you dare have the funeral. So the family ends up saying, we can't get a funeral. They, and they said, one funeral, one funeral home even told Navalny's family, said, we got, a, we got a phone call and we're told not to take your funeral. Thank you, Marius. We we're told not to take your funeral. Well, now what's happening is the family says the funeral's tomorrow. They can't get a hearse driver. They can't get a driver for the hearse, which is the vehicle that the coffin goes in when you transport the coffin from the church to the cemetery. They can't get anybody to drive it because, again, the, the people with the hearse services are getting threatening phone calls telling them not to do it. I mean, thank you, Ultra. Russia is a terrorist state. Russia is a dictatorship. Russia is a mafia state. You know, I tell you guys these stories so that you understand in a very granular, very specific way all the different ways in which Russia does things that we would never do. Our countries are not perfect. Our countries are flawed. We definitely have our problems. But when you go to Russia, you get all the problems you see in a dictatorship, not the problems you see in a free country. You don't, in our country, have a problem just simply finding someone to drive your dead body in a funeral. You don't have the government making phone calls threatening funeral homes not to take in a dead body that is screwed up we also as cool just said we also don't assassinate journalists in america russia does we also don't assassinate our political opponents not just in america in europe and asia and and, and the democratic countries of asia in russia they do but in any case all right moving on um finland so finland was pretty cool finland today the defense minister said that the Ukrainians are free to use the weapons they get from Finland to attack Russia. And not just attack Russian troops, but to attack Russian troops in Russia. This was a rather ballsy thing for Finland to say. Um, let me read this to you. Because other NATO countries are not so good about that. Thank you, Crystal. I don't think we know for a fact which NATO countries have told Ukraine not to use our weapons in Ukraine. It's pretty much a guarantee that America did. It's pretty much a guarantee that Germany and France have. The Brits, I don't know. Thank you, Joseph. And I will also guarantee you that some NATO countries have probably told um, the Ukrainians not to use our weapons to even go after Crimea, to even go after Ukraine's own territory the Russians stole. I will bet you. Now, Callum says the Brits have said that the Ukrainians can hit Russia, meaning hit Russian troops in Russia. Um, let me read you a little bit more what the Finnish, uh, I think this might be the defense. This is the, either the defense minister or a member of par, oh, this is a member of Finland's parliament. Listen to this. Ukraine should also strike military targets on the Russian side if necessary. Otherwise, these military objects will strike. Oh, otherwise, these military objects will strike on the Ukrainian side, meaning if we don't, if, if the Ukrainians don't strike these weapons in Russia, the weapons will be used to strike Ukraine, right? 
Um, this is an absolutely legal defensive struggle which Ukraine is waging. The United Nations Charter allows attacking military targets across land borders. The basic idea here is Russia's got planes, they've got missiles that they're launching from Russia and they're launching uh, helicopters and they're launching them from Russia. And the point is, why should Ukraine have to sit here and let Russia drones, the kamikaze drones? Why should Ukraine have to sit here and wait till they enter Ukrainian territory when they're much harder to take out? when they'd be much easier if Ukraine were able to hit the military bases these things are on. So kudos to Finland for saying this. You know, Finland may not have been providing the long range weapons that the French and the Germans have, or even the Americans, I don't know. But still, um, it's an important point to make and we shouldn't be tying Ukraine's hands. And by the way, the Russians have been killing our troops for decades. Um, the Russians were providing airplanes to the North Vietnamese during the Vietnam War to literally kill American troops. This goes back forever, right? We were using, we were providing weapons to the Mujahideen in Afghanistan to kill Russians in the 1980s. This is not new. Thank you, Jay. And for some crazy reason, we play this game now. I mean, Biden does, and the French, I think, and the Germans certainly do, of playing this game where we, and it really is kind of a game because, like, we're already killing Russian troops, guys, right? I mean, let's, let's, not, let's not sugarcoat this. America, Germany, France, all of us, our countries that are helping Ukraine, most of us are giving the Ukrainians weapons that are killing Russian troops, right? We're giving them artillery shells. Those artillery shells are killing Russians. We should stop pretending like, well, it's okay to kill Russian troops in Ukraine, but not kill Russian troops in Russia. And it's okay to kill them with missiles that go 100 miles, but not missiles that go 300 miles. What's the freaking, there is no difference, right? But we've played this game where we've tied Ukraine's hands behind their back and frankly made it harder for Ukraine to win the war. And it's one of the reasons Ukraine isn't winning the war because we made it harder for them, and I don't quite know why. Oh, oh, an update on that woman. Oh, my God. The ballerina, the American, um, Russian-American woman who got kidnapped in Russia recently, taken hostage like everybody else. So this Russian-American woman decides to go back to Russia to visit her grandmother a couple of weeks ago. And I'm sorry, she's an idiot. For some reason thinks... There's no problem. She's quoted today. Her boyfriend says she told her boyfriend, oh, don't worry about me going to Russia. Quote, it's safe there. <laughs> Three weeks ago, she told her boyfriend, oh, it's safe in Russia for me. Don't worry. I I've told you guys this before. I have no sympathy for these. I, I realize I should have empathy for these folks. I really don't. If you go to Russia at this point as an American, you are going to be locked up and they should take the key and throw it away as far as I'm concerned, because you're an idiot. We should not have to release. And frankly, and I've said this controversially, even that Wall Street Journal reporter, what the hell was he doing in Russia? What the hell was the Wall Street Journal? This was after Brittany Griner, after the Russians kidnapped the female basketball star. The Wall Street Journal thought, let's send. And what did they do? They sent a, a, an American who's Russian. His parents came here from Russia, from the Soviet Union. And he might have even he might have even been born in the Soviet Union. Does anybody know was Gershkovich born in the Soviet Union? He might have been. I think he was. His parents certainly came here from the Soviet Union. I think he might have. He is the he is the perfect person for the Russians to kidnap. He is exactly who the Russians would kidnap. And what did they do? They kidnapped him. No, I, I really mean this. I think at some point, the media should be held responsible for this. If you're going to send reporters to Russia at this point, then you need to just accept the fact. Yes, yeah, sunset's over, though, unfortunately. Now you're just seeing the light, but thank you. Um, thank you, sunshine. Right? At this point, you know, I, I, just, I just can't. In any case, so yes, she went and thought, <laughs> it's totally safe. I know Matthew Chance is still there. I think he's British, but he shouldn't be there either at this point. He absolutely shouldn't because he's CNN. Right. He's the perfect a CNN's guy, Matthew Chance. He's the perfect guy for them to take. It's really sad. It's just very sad. Um, in any case, um, what else we got? Um, rough. Oh, my God. So Russian refugees are being kicked out of Sri Lanka. So only in Russia. So war breaks out. A number of Russians and Ukrainians go to Sri Lanka for refugee or for refuge. Um, Ukrainians, because there's a war. Russians, because they're trying to get out of being drafted. The Sri Lankans apparently 
had a pretty open immigration policy where you could come on like a 30 day tourist visa, but they would keep uh, renewing it indefinitely to keep you there, you know, Western, well, maybe not Western currency, but, you know, currency's currency, right? Well, the Russians last weekend decided to throw a white party. Um, anybody knows what a white party? I've never been to one, but I know what they are. A white party is a party, usually it's a summertime. Uh, is it a summertime party? I don't even know. But it's a party where everyone dresses in white. And the whole party venue is white. So there'd be like white designs everywhere, right? Everything is white. You're dressed in white. Well, the Russians threw a white party. And on the invitation, they included a little detail that in addition to your costume being white, your face should be white. The Russians threw a whites-only party in Sri Lanka, a country that is generously letting them escape the war by going there. Well, the Sri Lankans were not happy. The government was not happy, and the Sri Lankan people were not happy. Um, they've demanded the Russians leave. The problem is they've also demanded the Ukrainians leave because they've lumped them all together. So they're telling the Russians and the Ukrainians to both leave. Uh, the latest news was that the government is is looking into it again. My guess, now my guess is the Ukrainians probably weighed in and maybe even the US did and said, look, if the Russians are being horrible, you know, refugees, that's one thing. But why would you lump in the Ukrainians and the Russians at the same time? Like, that's crazy, right? If the Russians did this, okay, but it's not the Ukrainians doing it. And nowadays, especially, big difference between Russians and Ukrainians, right? They're actually at war. <laughs> I mean, but in any case, literally a whites only party. And the placard said something about face white. And it was just like, oh, my God. Oh, Russia, <laughs> you're so special. Um, finally, oh, yeah, final story. This is really an awful story. Sorry to end on awful stories, but this is an awful one. But again, I tell you these stories so you will have a sense of what Russia is today, um, what the Russian government is. A 72-year-old woman um, near the town of Rostov in Russia, a retired woman. She was a miner, like working in the mines, right? Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you, Paul. And she was just sentenced, thank you, Sunshine, to five and a half years in prison for posting criticism of the war on social media. Thank you, Maddies. Five and a half years in prison, a 72-year-old retired woman. Um, it was a day after she found out that a relative of hers was injured in Ukraine, a, a, a Russian fighter was injured in Ukraine. She never supported the war anyway, but she was really pissed off that, you know, that the, her, her relative got hurt. She posted on social media two things. The first thing was a claim that 89,000 uh, Ukrainians had died in Mariupol. Now, Mariupol, southeastern Ukraine, city the Russians were blowing up for a long time. It is quite possible the Russians killed 89,000 Ukrainians. Yes. Um, the, thinking, the thinking is they've killed a hell of a lot because it was a town of 500,000 people that shrunk to 100,000 people. Thank you, Mustard. Um, the second thing she posted was quite risque, I would say. Um, it was a young girl in front of the Nazi symbol. I don't want to say, I, I'm afraid of saying certain words and triggering TikTok's little thing, but the Nazi symbol behind the girl. And it said something like slaughter all Russians. Now, this was, you know, probably a Ukrainian, probably a Ukrainian mean, I'm guessing. Um, it was very harsh, obviously. So they sent the police to her home. They searched her home for six hours, she said, from four o'clock in the afternoon to six o'clock at night. Thank you, Darian. They couldn't find anything. They were looking for something illegal. They couldn't find anything illegal, but, but they got her phone. And because they got the social media posts, they sent her to five and a half years in prison. You're not certain you. Yeah, I was just going to say that's the kind of thing I say mute I, again. Yeah, I'm with you mods on that one. Thank you, Crystal. Yeah. Five and a half years in prison to this poor woman. It's just, but this is what they do in Russia. This is what they do. And we've known time and time and again, there is literally a Russian law on the books. Oh, and the Russians brag about it. There is a Russian law on the books. You cannot criticize the military, period. 
Thank you, Crystals, for that, by the way, for the good evening. Um, you are not permitted to criticize the military. Thank you, Darian, for the hands. I'm just trying to go back and make sure anybody I missed here. Mustard, I got you. Um, you're not allowed to criticize the military in any way. You get five to 15 years in prison. Um, there's a Russian blogger who's, he's a war criminal. I mean, he is. He's a war criminal indicted and, and uh, sentenced, actually, by the International Criminal Court. Thank you, Montserrat. Thank you, Catherine. But... Um, but his crime in Russia, they're fine with him being a war criminal. His crime in Russia is, thank you, Blue Ariel and Darian, is that he criticized the war and criticized Putin. Now, criticized the war by saying that it wasn't going well enough, that Putin was screwing up. In other words, this guy's an ultra-nationalist. He's facing five years in prison, possibly, because he criticized Putin and said Putin was fighting the war poorly. Okay? That is a dictatorship. That is a dictatorship. That, that I, again, I will point out again and again and again. So, all right, that is it for the news. Uh, no, you cannot hang plants on the sprinkler system. Apparently it's illegal. <laughs> it's a violation. I asked, it's a violation of code. Um, let me show you guys a couple of the auction items because our auctions end tomorrow. We do an auction every week or so uh, that benefits Ukraine. Half the money benefits Ukraine, half the money benefits me because I do this full time. Uh, the way I'm able to afford doing this and pay my bills is your guys' gifts that you give on TikTok and YouTube and the auctions help too. So please do keep the gifts coming. I kid you not, I've been doing this full time for two years since the war broke out and I'm able to survive because of your guys' help. But let me show you, we've got some cool gifts. Thank you, Big Hawk. Um, very cool Ukrainian patch that Mustard will get pissed at me for showing. But uh, it's, oops, <laughs> thank you, Eden and Timothy. <laughs> very cute. Um, thank you, Big Hawk, too. Uh, very cool Ukrainian military patch. This one might be a little bit older, we believe. Uh, but that one's very cool. I've got... Um, this is my one of my personal favorites. Thank you, Ali and RN. Uh, this is a nice, it's the Petra Kivka style, the traditional Ukrainian style. It's a Christmas ornament, but it doesn't have to be a Christmas ornament. You can hang it anywhere, really. But it's the beautiful painted, I just love these things, beautiful painted style. Thank you, incredible. Thank you, Tony. Um, just very pretty. Both sides are the same, of course, no big surprise, but very pretty. Um, Two other pieces. This I love because this I think is very interesting. A little bit of history. It is a piece of a Ukrainian MiG-29 shot down over Ukraine. We know when, well, we know when it was found and we know one of the planes it was a part of. Basically, it, we believe from doing the research and from, from what I'm told from people I got it from, we believe this is one of the, um, basically Ukrainian Blue Angels, so to speak, their display team. They had six planes up until around 2002 or so, 2002, 2004, that were the planes that do the you know acrobatics and all that kind of stuff. They were painted really cool, blue and yellow, like the Ukrainian flag, and they were retired. Well, when war broke out, when the Russians first invaded in 2014, because this war has actually been going on for nine years or 10 years, 2014, they took the planes out of mothballs, right? Flight demonstration team, exactly. And they started using them as fighter jets. Well, this is one of them shot down, we believe probably early January is when the plane was found. It possibly was a friendly fire, a friendly fire incident. We don't know. The Ukrainians might have shot down their own plane. It's possible. In any case, this is a piece of it, kind of a cool, I, I just, you know, I just think it's kind of cool. And it's very pretty. It's a very pretty piece with the cool Ukrainian color on it. So that's neat. And the final thing I will show you, but we've got other things, is a Ukrainian challenge coin. And this one is the Ghost of Kiev. So it's a Ghost of Kiev challenge coin. That's him on the front. And the back shows kind of a mix of a fighter jet, the Ukrainian um, motherland monument or whatever it's called. A couple other things. You guys, I don't know if it'll... Oh, it's go there we go. It's in focus. I'm shocked it's in focus. Oh, there you go. It's very hard to get it in focus for you guys on YouTube. It gets, as you saw, it almost did, and then it gets funny. Oop. Well, anyway, you get to you get you get a sense of what it is. That's the fighter jet. Ah, it's hard to focus for you guys. But these are all very cool. Uh, check them out. I've got about nine different things we're auctioning. And again, half of the auction money goes to Ukraine, half of it will go to support my work. They're all over on Discord. That's discord.erevosis.com. Go check them out. Thank you, Adventures. But they all end at different times tomorrow during the day, so do check them out. All right. So is Ukraine winning yet? They're not losing yet. 
I think the bigger question is, is Russia winning yet? We are two year, We are in the third year of a war that Russia thought it was going to win in three days. If you ask me, if you're little old Ukraine and you gave up your nuclear weapons and you gave up all your best weapons because supposedly Russia was going to be nice and you live next to a nuclear superpower and that superpower invades you and all the experts say that war is going to take three days to 10 days and you're going to lose and now we're in the third year of the war. If you ask me, that means Ukraine has done a pretty damn good job and it means Russia is a laughing stock that Russia is an embarrassment for how bad the war is going. Russia was supposed to win this war in three to 10 days. It's the third year now. So feel free to troll all you want about is Ukraine winning. But I got news for you. The real question is, is Russia winning? Because they're clearly not. And the more embarrassing thing is Russia's losing in part because they can't beat A, they can't beat the Ukrainian military because the Ukrainian military is obviously pretty damn good but they also can't beat the Western weapons because our weapons are better than theirs, which is kind of an embarrassment for Russia. So, oops, sorry. Anyway, they're a paper tiger, but they're a paper tiger with, with nukes and they're a paper tiger that has a lot of men and a lot of artillery. So they're able to cause a lot of damage. Uh, no news on Transnistria. Uh, the Russians did not, Putin did not mention Transnistria yesterday in his speech to parliament. Um, he, we thought he was going to. He still may in the coming days. Thank you, Shane. But for whatever reason, he did not. So not clear, not clear why. So, um, you know. Anyway, so what else we got? So that's it for the news, guys. Questions, comments, thoughts. What else? What else? What else? Anything? I'm watching. I'm always laughing because I watch like sometimes when you guys chat amongst yourselves. Uh, these start every night, Monday to Friday at six o'clock Eastern time U.S. So that's Washington, D.C. or New York City time, six o'clock. So Monday to Friday. Uh, nothing happening today with Moldova. I mean, the Russians, Moldova is an independent country right next to Ukraine. Um, European country. It is right here, more or less. And there's a sliver of Moldova called Transnistria that the Russians have been trying to basically break away for three decades. Thank you, Courtney. And the Russians are starting to make a lot of noise as if maybe they're going to annex Transnistria and make it part of Russia. So there's been a lot of concern about that, but there's been no news in the last day or so. <clears throat> so no news on the Ukrainian F-16s. Nope. Nope. Thank you, Yoreb. I mean, in principle, those should be arriving this summer, we believe, you know. I mean, that's the, that, that's the hope, you know. I did vote for Reagan in the 1980s. Yes, I did. Um, thank you for that. Was that with Wingman? Thank you, Hedge, for the Wingman. Um, and Shane, thank you. When will the war end? You know, that's the question. I mean, you know, the war is going to end when Ukraine wins or Russia wins. Unfortunately, I think the war could have been over, maybe not by now, but it could have been over early had we given Ukraine everything it needed, but we were afraid to. We were afraid of angering Putin. You know, what are we gaining from the war? A ton. I think Russia is going to move on and threaten Europe after it's done with Ukraine. What we are gaining in this war is stopping World War III, quite simply. That's it. Pretty good reason, you know. Ha, I am old enough to have voted for Reagan, but thank you. <laughs> thank you, Timothy. That was my first election. Well, second Reagan election was my first election. Um, oh, I see the Russian talking points are getting more complicated. They're starting to put other words in with liar, liar. Um, why is NATO expanding? NATO isn't expanding. NATO hasn't expanded in years. Well, OK, it expanded now because Russia made it expand. NATO just expanded because Russia invaded Ukraine and he freaked the hell out of Sweden and Finland that are near uh, Russia. Finland borders Russia. I will show you. And Sweden is right there. Here's Russia. Here, here's Russia. Here's Ukraine. So this is all Russia. Here's Finland right on the border with Russia. The Russians invaded Ukraine and pretty much convinced the Europeans that they were warmongering dictators like they were back in the Soviet years during the Cold War. And, and I think the same thing. The Russians are back. 
They are the same people. I mean, they never changed, but they're the same people they were in the 1900s. They're the same people as the Soviets, and they're back to taking over their neighbors, and they're back to being a brutal dictatorship that kills its own people and imprisons its own people. Um, that means they're a danger to their neighbors. And once they invaded Ukraine, Sweden and Finland freaked out because they said, holy cow, we're not members of NATO, which means Russia can attack us and nobody has to come to our defense. So Sweden and Finland joined NATO for that reason. Um, Otherwise, no one has joined NATO in years. Now, a number of European countries joined NATO earlier. That's because they were basically held hostage by Russia for decades. Um, European countries were invaded by Russia after World War II, or during World War II. Um, the Russians turned them into communist dictatorships. I mean, the most brutal dictatorships on the planet these countries were, um, all because the Russians wanted them for themselves. So they turned half of Europe into a communist, brutal communist dictatorship. The other countries, they just ate. Like Ukraine, Russia just ate, made it part of the Soviet Union. Um, Latvia, Lithuania, Estonia made it part of the Soviet Union. Well, all those countries, when they escaped from, basically, they were hostages that escaped their prisoner, Russia. And when they escaped the prisoner, they said, oh my God, save me. And they came to NATO and said, please don't let that dictatorship brutalize me after for another 50 years. And NATO said, we'll protect you. So that's why NATO expanded years ago, not recently, was because the Russians had kidnapped all these countries and brutalized them for 50 years. And the Russians don't like to tell you that. They keep saying, why is NATO expanding? NATO is expanding because your victims got away and they've gone and asked for help to the police. That's why NATO expanded. So, but yeah, Finland and Sweden expanded because Russia invaded Ukraine and the Finns and the Swedes said, holy cow, they're attacking their neighbors. So the Russians, as always, have nobody to blame but themselves, as is always the... Sweden is... Sweden is definitely joining NATO, Craig. Um, they have not... I looked into this the other day. And basically, where things stand with Sweden, Finland joined NATO. Sweden has gotten all the votes it needs. Every NATO country has to vote in favor of Sweden joining. That's the way it works. Every NATO country has now voted. Um, the Hungarian government, which was the last one to vote, has to transmit the documents to Washington, which presumably they have. The Secretary General of NATO then has to formally invite Sweden, from what I've read on the NATO website, and say, Sweden, would you like to join? Sweden then has to say, yes, we would love to join. Here's the document we signed saying we join. Sweden sends it to Washington and boom, Sweden's a member of NATO. Um, then there is a flag raising ceremony that I believe is probably more ceremonial, meaning they're already a member of NATO as soon as they signed the document and send it back to Washington. My guess would be that's already done unless the Hungarians are playing games and sitting back. But I'm a little surprised that we haven't heard anything. Actually, I'm going to Google that right now because I am a little surprised that we haven't had any updates on, um, on, on Sweden joining NATO and basically the flag ceremony, right? Like they, you'd think they would have had that by now, like Wednesday, certainly. Um, yeah, Moscow vows response to Sweden joining NATO, whatever. Bash Brannigan, could Moldova join NATO I'm trying to remember. Moldova is trying to join the EU. I don't remember if Moldova applied to NATO. Does anybody know? I mean, they could apply, of course. But does anybody know? Has Moldova, um, did Moldova, has Moldova tried to join NATO or expressed an interest? I'm trying to see here. Yeah, there's no, there's no update here, though. No. Yeah, we're still waiting. There's no sort of update on what the on what the latest is on Sweden. No, it's all from three days ago. Yeah, so no, everyone's saying no. Okay, okay. You're from Moldova and you'll never join NATO. Well, you may need to. <laughs> like, looking at what Russia, I mean, honestly, the Moldovans need to be in NATO, to be honest. But that's you know, that's that's a different question. Um. So. Well, Moldova should unite with Romania. I mean, again, I appreciate if they want to be their own country, but the smartest thing for Moldova to do would be to unite with Romania, really. You know? Oh, that's interesting, Oculto. 
I know Serbs are always kind of you Serbs are a little funny on the Russia thing. So I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued that you're saying that. I have never been to Ukraine. I would like to go. It's just a matter of when. But I have never been. Nope. Been to the Soviet Union. That was lovely. <laughs> but not been to Ukraine. Nope. Um, Soviet Union and Russia, both. I was there after it was no longer Soviet. But I was there when it was Soviet. That was wild. That was 1984. Crazy time to be there. Hey, Martin. Um, crazy time to be there. Yeah, no, I'd love to go to Ukraine. I will some, at some point. Interesting. You, Moldova has neutrality enshrined in their constitution. Yeah, but so does Sweden and Finland. I mean, you know, I mean, you know, I'm not sure what um, what what the latest is with Serbia. I will say that Serbia did sign a statement the other day, along with a number of other Central European, I think like former Yugoslavian countries, uh, criticizing Russia over the war, which I thought was very surprising because the Serbs have kind of a funny relationship with Russia. They're a little too close to Russia, you know? Exactly. Ferguson says you're only neutral until you're invaded. Well, until you're invaded or your neighbor's invaded. In Moldova's case, it's going to be until you're invaded because Russia, I think, will take Transnistria at some point directly. And after, at that point, I think it's going to be hard for the Moldovans to say, oh, we better stay neutral, you know? But I don't know whether NATO would take. I don't think they should join. They should join Romania. You know. Um, exactly. Neutra neutrality will not protect you. Um, well, like I said, the Sweden, the Sweden and Finland thing is fascinating. I mean, both neutral countries forever, and this invasion just changed them both. Russia's absolute. I think Russia's fascist. Yeah. I mean, it depends. I guess you know, definition of fascism is a bit, you know, a bit gray. I think to some degree, right? But, I mean, it's autocratic. It's probably fascist, too, I think. I sort of think of fascist as being sort of the internally militaristic and all of that, you know? Um, I, I, people are taking down your comments, Liv? What do you mean? I've seen you. I know, I've seen you a lot. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I don't take your comments down. Mods, are you guys taking Liv's comments down? I don't, I'm not sure why, Liv, but, but sorry. <laughs> it all depends, though, if you've been, oh, oh it could be, odd. now that's possible, too. Callum's right about that. There is, TikTok also has an auto mod feature where the AI try, uh, basically censors stuff without us even knowing it. So, sorry about that. There are certain words that you can't write, for example. And we've also had to put certain words in because people were spamming with those words. So we had to take them. We had to sort of take them out. So, yeah, sorry. Um, thank you, person with maybe Japanese handwriting for the Ukrainian flags. Um, I don't know if Putin mentioned. Did he mention us in his speech? The U.S.? I would have thought he'd mentioned the U.K. He loves to mention the U.K. He gets pissed at them all the time. You know, can't use the old German political part. Oh, can you not? That's what, Oh, that's interesting. That's interesting. I didn't think of that. That's true. The old German political party word or the H man may not be allowed to be said. That's possible. Yeah, that's possible. That's possible. Um, yeah, that's got to be it. Could Russia effectively control the Black Sea? I mean, not easily because you've got Turkey. Forget Georgia, but you've got Turkey, Romania, and Bulgaria. I mean, honestly, Russia, you know, Russia controls the Black Sea if we let Russia control the Black Sea is the way I feel. You know, I mean, you know, we need to just make clear to them that it's not. You can say Stalin. Yeah, apparently you can say Stalin. Yes, yes. Um, there was uh, not five years ago. There was this weird discussion, but I think it was very pie in the sky back in the 1990s about Russia joining NATO. And I don't think it was anything serious. Um, Putin claims he asked Bill Clinton about President Clinton about it, but it wasn't anything serious because at the time Russia wasn't, you know, I mean, it's good that Russia got rid of communism, but they weren't really our friend, you know. And as we've seen, it, it's very good thing Russia didn't join NATO because they didn't change. They're still the same autocratic, dictatorial, imperialistic, murderous state they've always been, you know, unfortunately. Yeah, Mr. Moto. I wouldn't even try to go there. D don't don't try to find ways around it. It's not good. Yeah. No need to say that man's name. So 
I don't know what's taking down all the Russian jets. It's fascinating. Uh, Chuck asked, because we were talking about how three uh, Su-34 fighter planes were shot down today by the Russians, or by the Ukrainians, excuse me, Ukrainians. Um, they shot down an A-50, the, the hugely expensive surveillance plane the other day. They've shot down 12 planes this month, I think, and possibly 12 Su-34s this month, I should say. Like crazy the number of planes they've shot down, and it's not entirely sure how. I do support Ukraine, yes. Um, <clears throat> missiles, but the question is like, what, why, when, why now, right? You know, is Ukraine moving the, F the, the Patriots closer to the front than they were doing before? You know what I mean? Uh, did Russia change where it's flying? You know, I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. I don't know. How serious is the nuclear threat? Not serious. I don't think it's serious at all, Jack. Russia, I mean, I, I said at the beginning of the show, we've got nukes too. What's Russia going to do? Nuke us? Good luck with that. If they nuke us, we're going to destroy Moscow. And they know it. So they're not going to nuke us. The only nuclear threat that's ever been out there is, you know, would Russia, a little more light? No, maybe not. Would Russia use a nuke in Ukraine? But even then, I think my, oh yeah, that's my, my mug. Um, they were on TikTok. They were on YouTube, uh, YouTube, on Amazon, but I don't, I didn't see them being sold anymore on Amazon. Oh. Nukes in space. No more updates on the nukes in space other than Putin denied it yesterday, of course. We would never put nuclear weapons in space, which pretty much means he's planning on putting nuclear weapons in space. But that's the only update, yeah. So, should America send troops to help Ukraine? You know, America is not ready, politically ready to send troops. Biden has not done a good job of of getting of building support among the American people for Ukraine. So there's no way in hell he'd be able to send troops. Um, I think from the beginning of the before the war started, NATO should have put peacekeepers all over Ukraine and told Russia, great, you're not invading. You say you're not invading. That's wonderful because we're going to put troops all over the country. And if you do invade, you're going to kill NATO troops and we're going to go to war with you. And they should have said that at the beginning. Ronald Reagan would have done it. You know, I mean, Reagan, a lot of things I disagree with on Reagan, but on foreign policy, that man was like, boom, you know, and we should have told the Russians from day one, like, great, you're not invading. Perfect. We're going to put we're going to put troops all over all over Ukraine. You know, and that would have been the end of it. And what's Putin going to do? He's going to bomb Kiev and risk bombing American troops. Good luck with that. Kharkiv. You know, and we should have told him, you kill our troops and we're at war. You know? Oh, that is hilarious. Wow. That's bizarre. I just got a verification on TikTok. I've never seen such a thing. I had a, one, of those, one of those verification boxes where you've got to move the, the puzzle piece to fit inside another puzzle piece to prove you're a person. They just gave it to me during my live. That is the weirdest thing I've ever seen. Wow. I wonder if people are somehow streaming videos or something. Thank you, Nicholas. You know what I mean? Like streaming videos and it's not a real person there. So they would catch that you didn't respond. How weird. Wow. Please keep the gifts coming, guys. Like I said, I've always got to keep hitting you up for the gifts because I do this for free and I need to pay the bills. So thank you for that. And you can also subscribe as well and be a monthly subscriber on TikTok, on YouTube. Um, you can also go to my, my erevosis.com page for you guys, or you guys just go to my link in my profile. I'll click the link tree link and you'll find my PayPal, my Venmo. Um, like I said, all the different members, uh, Kofi, which is another membership way. So, you know. Oh, that's interesting, Ty. YouTube rerun videos. That's interesting. Okay. Yeah, I assumed it's some kind of AI thing, I guess. Oh, no, that's interesting, too. Th thank you for the reindeer, Swan. Thank you, Kamelt. I didn't think of that AI. Yeah. If there's some way of just... Because you're right, if you create a thing, it can't actually interact with the screen. Thank you, Hand Hearts, or, or Flicker for the Hearts. Very interesting. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it's inevitable that NATO will put, will put boots on the ground. Um, thank you, Sunshine. I think, you know, it might be inevitable that, that the polls 
and the Estonians and the Latvians and Lithuanians put boots on the ground. Thank you, Martin. You know, they may have to. And this has been one of my concerns from the beginning. Thank you, Jetta. Has been if we don't help Ukraine and the war starts going bad, things are going to get desperate. Ukraine will get desperate and start doing things that maybe we don't like. You know, um, Poland may get desperate. The Baltic states may get desperate. Like basically all the people who neighbor Ukraine may Romania, frankly, may start getting worried, too. Do you, does Romania want Russia taking all of Ukraine? So now Russia's on Romania's border. Really? Even Hungary, even Hungary, that's got a real problem when it comes to Russia, you know, loving Russia. Um, do you really want Russia on your border? Mm, you know, so that's when you get the danger of troops. OK, Ash, see you. Thanks for thanks for coming by. Um you know, I like that. Ash is leaving. She does a couple. She does a few blocks on the way out. <laughs> um, yeah, the Polish Ukraine border thing is a mess. Um, they're talking about stopping trade at the border entirely. It, it's it's a mess. It's a mess. Honestly, I feel like the Ukrainians need to, you know. All right. Yep. See you, Moto. I feel like the 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 Poles need to kind of get their act together. You know. No, I know Orban is in Hungary, but Orban runs the thing. Sadly. And you know what? Hungarians keep voting for him. And I kind of feel the same way about Donald Trump. You know, we voted for the man. I mean, yeah, the Russians helped and the FBI also helped. But America did vote for the man, you know, um, and too many people support Trump now. So it's hard for us to say, oh, Trump, he's just crazy and a criminal. You know, none of us like him. He's not America. Trump is America. Half the freaking country voted for him, you know. Uh, I am not a professional newscaster. No, I've done a lot of media before, but I'm I've not a newscaster. New, no. new. No. Um, yeah. Well, the thing with Macron is I don't think Macron said he wants to send troops. Macron wanted the idea out there about possibly sending troops, and frankly, it's not a bad idea. Eventually, you know, NATO or somebody may need to send troops to guarantee the Russians don't take over the entire country. For example, that the Russians don't take Kiev, the Ukrainian capital. We may need troops there. So the Russians say, oh, crap, you know, if we invade Kiev, we're going to be killing NATO troops. It would have helped at the beginning of the war, you know. Um, well, that Solak says there's an excellent new video on YouTube PB oh, from PBS Space Time about nukes in space. And it really explains the electromagnetic pulse and other consequences of nukes in space. OK, cool. I'll try to remember that later. Um, thank you. Life for the hearts. Uh, what else, guys? Oh, we're already after seven. Oh, boy. Hmm. Oh, and I have to tell you, funny little story. So I finally went to the uh, Trader Joe's here in Washington, D.C. Trader Joe's is a wonderful grocery store here in America. Kind of gourmet, but the prices are low. Like the prices are lower than the regular grocery store for most things, but it's it's kind of a gourmet grocery store. I really don't understand the business model. Um went there today and I spent like $55. Now, I could have easily spent $45 because I bought two things of chocolate, one for me and one for a friend. So on regular food, I spent $45, okay? And it's it's way better than, it may be owned by Aldi's, but it's way better than Aldi's. Trader Joe's is gourmet. <laughs> Aldi's is not gourmet. <laughs> um, I spent $45. I bought enough food for probably nine dinners, OK, nine dinners for forty five dollars. Um, I was thinking of Tucker Carlson and saying he was in Moscow and he spent one hundred dollars for a week's worth of food. And I was telling you guys that I thought one hundred dollars for a week's worth of food was entirely possible. And I don't think it was you guys, but I remember people on Twitter, on TikTok, in the comments were like, that's impossible. You could never just spend one hundred dollars for a week of food. And I was like, I don't think so. I could have easily doubled this amount and spent ninety dollars and I would have had what, six, 17, 18 meals. That would be more than enough for lunch and dinner. And breakfast, breakfast is, oh, they have good bread. I didn't know that I would have bought bread. You know, bread is easy. Like my breakfast is coffee and bread anyway, but you could have eggs. But for a hundred dollars, I think you could easily have a week's worth of groceries from Trader Joe's. No, blew my mind how, how cheap they were, you know? Three dollars, three dollars for 10 ounces of fresh pasta? Fresh tortellini, $3? That's insane. 
Um, no, anyway, it blew my mind. I, I've, I, I, I had no idea. I mean, the problem is there isn't one very close to me. I wish there was. Um, I was radicalized. I was radicalized. <laughs> exactly. I was radicalized by, by, by just how amazing the store was. But I just can't believe, I mean, Tucker Carlson, thank you, Super Hornet, talking about how he spent $100 on a week's worth of groceries. I would have spent $100. Yeah, yeah. And again, you could spend more than 100 but like I said, I got a ton of stuff. Um, ton of stuff. Um, I know, $3 normally can't buy fresh tortellini. It can at my Trader Joe's. I spent three bucks and got like 10 ounces of tortellini, cheese tortellini. It was amazing. Absolutely, in the refrigerator section, absolutely amazing. Yeah, really, am I mean, I'm shocked at the prices there. Absolutely shocked. Um, you know, the checkout, yeah. I mean, the checkout was, in I don't know, was interesting. But, uh, but yeah, I'm going to have to do it more often. Absolutely amazing. You know, Aldi, okay. I don't really go to, I thought Aldi's was kind of, you know, like not as good of stuff or whatever. Thank you, Patty. I mean, cheap, but. I never thought of Aldi's as being as good. But I believe you. Five thirty nine for a gallon of milk. Oh my God. Yeah, I'm paying probably two thirty nine or two eighty nine for milk now. I forget for a gallon. I forget. Um Yeah. In any case. Yeah, I was gonna say Aldi I feel like it's hit or miss. Trader Joe's is very good. Um and I bought their little, oh my God, they've got these, I had these in Arizona when I was visiting my nephew. They have these little knockoff Reese's peanut butter cups. Oh my God. Oh, oh my God. I mean, oh. I, I, the thing is, I just lost a little weight recently, so I'm trying like, I'm not gonna have, I'm gonna try to have like one a day, <laughs> you know, so that I don't like just drink this container of things, you know? Oh my God. Anyway. Anyway, what else we got? Yeah, another one they got, they've got chocolate covered almonds too. I didn't want to go crazy though. I bought the Reese's. I didn't want to do, I didn't want to do anything more than that, you know, but, but I did see the chocolate covered almonds and I was like, Ooh, <laughs> and, and I got some tomato. Oh my God. The tomato sauces. Oh my God. I mean, vodka, vodka, what do you call the, you know, the vo tomato vodka cream sauce a nice container, $3? Where are you going to get like a vodka cream sauce for $3? I mean, no, the prices were ridiculous how cheap the prices were. Absolutely ridiculous. Oh, anyway, now I want to go back. I'm like, I know, sorry, I'm making you hungry. I, I blew my mind though. I was just like, oh my God, you know? Why don't we use the metric system? Who the hell knows? Who knows? We use it for uh, wine. <laughs> I think that's it. I think that's it. There was a, there was the, um, there was that comedian. What was the comedy? I, I sent it to you, Callum, that video, the comedy video about Americans and the metric system. And like, we use it for wine. We use it for, what, what else did we say we used it for? I forgot. L you know, wine, like a liter, a liter bottle of wine we use. We don't use meters. I think we don't use for anything. I'm trying to think. Temperature, we don't use for your temperature. It's Fahrenheit. Um, yeah, I don't know. But it is, the problem is how do you switch is the problem. You know, it's hard to switch. And we've tried, I mean, since I was a kid, they tried, military uses metric, that's interesting. Since I was a kid, they've been trying to, oh, two liter soda, that's true, actually, you're right. And for soda, pop too. Soda, right, the liter, yep. But milk is a gallon. We wouldn't say four liters, we'd say a gallon of milk or a quart of milk. You know, um, but, oh, interesting. Aldi says wines and chocolates. That's interesting. Okay. Um, you know, I don't know, but it's hard. To, I mean, I think it'd be hard for people to switch, you know? Yeah. I mean, Malathos, that's what I mean. Having bought what I did today at, at Trader Joe's, doubling it, I would have a week's worth of food because I bought enough. I bought like nine meals, you know, which could be nine dinners right there. Um, Anyway, it's funny. Beer is a pint. Well, we wouldn't call it a... Do, we wouldn't really call a beer a pint, though, would we? Do we say pints of beer like the Brits do? Or a large beer? What would you call it when you order a beer that's a big, a big glass? Do we call it a pint at a bar? I feel like that's a British thing. I'm seeing a lot of no's here. 
just say a large, <laughs> a large or a, or a, or a mug. Yeah. I don't, a pint, a pint is a British thing though. I'm, in America, people call it a pint or a beer. Exactly. See, I would think a large, like give me a large beer or a tall glass or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. But you're Canadian. I like that. We do in Saskatchewan. You're Canadian. <laughs> we, I'm sure you do, <laughs> you know, um, a tall boy. Ah, tall boy. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. No, we just don't, we don't, it, it's, you know, when I was a kid, they, they claimed they were going to, I think Jimmy Carter did this, that they were going to switch us to the metric system. And I'm sure everybody freaked out. So like, you know, I use it for some things. Like I know, I know what a centimeter is. Like for me, a centimeter is kind of a useful measurement. So I'll use centimeter kilometer. I don't like using meter. Eh, meter is the same thing as a yard. Like we have a yard, which is similar to a meter. So, you know, how much is that actually? Um, Alexa, how many yards to a meter? One meter is about one yard. Oh, there you go. Okay. Alexa's cheating. She goes, one meter is about one yard. That wasn't quite my question. Was it? Like, Alexa's getting really sassy lately, I've noticed. Yeah, but it's not exactly a yard. I was asking exactly. Is it 1.1? Um, but they're very close. But I would never really use a meter. I would never tell distance in meters. Um, Celsius, I would never use Celsius. Like, I'll use it for you guys to help you out, but I would never use Celsius here. Um, kilos, same thing. A kilo? We don't really, we just don't use it. We really don't use it. The military does. That's funny. How many meters in a mile? It's same as yards. It's probably 2,000. No, no. 1,800 maybe? Meters to a yard? 1,600? There you go. Okay. Yeah, because a, a mile is 5,280 feet, which of course is a ridiculous, a ridiculous thing. Yeah, there's a Saturday Night Live episode there's a Saturday Night Live episode that's wonderful about the, where is it? I'm going to see if I can find this, Callum. I sent it to Callum at the, at the risk of angering the, uh, the YouTube gods, which I'm sure it will. I'll at least bring the TikTok will let me do this. Hold on. I should have it on here. There was a wonderful Saturday Night Live, which is an American comedy show, and they, um, they did an episode like talking about meters and yards and everything, and it was like the American Revolution, you know, 1776, talking about our new country. And it was the funniest damn thing. Hold on. I know I sent it to Callum, so it's got to be here. Assuming I didn't set our stuff on automatic erase, which is entirely possible. Where is this? Come on. Otherwise, I'll Google it. Come on. Come on. We've got too much back and forth here, Callum. <clears throat> One second, guys. I'm going to find it. I'm going to Google this if I can't find it. Uh, nope. Do, 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 do. I'm going to find this. There's Trump. Nope, that's the one. I'm going to have to Google this, I think, because it's too hard to tell. I am going to find this for you guys if it kills me, because it's the funniest damn thing. Like I said, I'll forget. I'm just going to Google this. Uh, SNL metric system skit. There we go. Here we go. OK, oh, God, from YouTube. That's bad, because then YouTube's going to definitely recognize it here. We'll pull it up from TikTok. We fight for a country of hey. our own, a new nation where we choose our own laws. Sir. Choose our own leaders. Yes, sir. And choose our own systems of weights and measures. <laughs> <laughs> weights and measures, sir? Yes. Yes, I dream of that one day. Our proud nation will measure weights in pounds, and that 2,000 pounds shall be called a ton. <laughs> And what would 1,000 pounds be called, sir? Nothing. Because <laughs> we will have no word for that. Seems like we should have a word for 1,000 pounds, sir. 
And yet we won't. <laughs> because we are free men. And we will be free to measure liquids in liters and milliliters. But not all liquids, only soda, wine, and alcohol. <laughs> only those, sir. Yes. Because for milk and paint, we will use gallons, pints, and quarts, God will. Okay. How many liters are in a gallon, sir? Nobody knows. <laughs> sir, in this new country, what plans are there for men of color such as I? Distance will be measured in inches, feet, yards, and miles. So 12 inches to a foot? feet to a yard if it were only so simple <laughs> three feet to a yard and uh how many yards to a mile nobody knows <laughs> okay well how many feet to a mile Five thousand two hundred eighty. <laughs> it's a simple number that everyone will remember Confess, it feels a little complicated, sir. Why not use meters and kilometers? We will, soldier. But only in certain and popular sports like track and swimming. <laughs> For popular sports like football, we will use yards. Football, sir? Yes. It's a sport where you throw a ball with your hands. <laughs> so in football, there is no kicking? There's a little kicking. points how many points sir sometimes one and sometimes three I'm very confused sir do not worry for our new nation we will have rulers with two sets of numbers inches on one side centimeters on the other so we can see where they line up yes except that they don't line up and they never will <laughs> Liberty, son. Liberty. And the slaves, sir. What of them? You asked about the temperature. I did not. <laughs> we, we show up two different unrelated scales of temperature. One of them will make sense to the entire world, and the other will be super random. Our great nation will use the random one. <laughs> Scale cold, sir. Fahrenheit. Spell that for me. Impossible. <laughs> but one day, if we are brave, we will get rid of you and a lot of British words like color and armor. But by God, we will keep the British you and the word glamour. <laughs> Only glamour, sir? Only glamour. <laughs> that is my dream for our countrymen. A melting pot of different measurements that will make Europeans throw little tantrums. In short, a land of liberty where all men are free. <laughs> <laughs> the guy at the end is he's a black actor. He goes, where all men are free. And the big guy kind of turns and pats him on the shoulder and walks away. <laughs> It's just, it's a, you could just Google SNL, it's Saturday Night Live, SNL, Saturday Night Live metric skit, and it'll come up. It's all over the internet. It's on YouTube, it's on TikTok, but yeah, it's a wonderful skit. <laughs> somebody, somebody, I think either, either they did it recently or somebody gave it to me recently, but yeah, it's just the most, and it's so spot on. It's like, yep, we just, you know, who knows why. And I forgot about the track and field. Yeah, track and field, we use meters. So like the four, four, when I was a kid, 440, well, the 440 was the yard. We'd say 440 yard dash, though, we said when we were kids. We didn't say meters. We still said yards, though, we would call it the 440. Oh, my God. So funny. He's funny. Was it a few months ago? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. All right, guys. It's almost an hour and a half here. I think I'm going to get rolling here. Well, swimming, that's true. Yeah, we use it for swimming, too. Like you said, the unpopular sports. <laughs> so it is, it is racing. That's what I thought. Okay. Hope the dog is wanting to, I know, Sasha, I hear you. She's wanting to play with the neighbor again. Yeah, I would say 440 yard, we say. We don't even say meter. Um, all right, Kate, I can do a quick recap here. All right, quick recap. So uh, coffee talk Saturday morning for the monthly subscribers. 
excuse me, feel free to subscribe monthly on TikTok with the live subscription link in my bio. YouTube, you guys can become YouTube subscribers. Discord, Kofi, or Twitch subscribers, all of you can access via Discord. You guys will do it via TikTok Saturday morning, 11 a.m. Eastern Time U.S. Uh, today is day 733 of Putin's special three-day military operation. Um, some discussion of a vote coming up in the House of Representatives for Ukraine aid, but nothing real yet. But there was talk. Um, Putin threatened to nuke France over possible use of NATO troops in Ukraine. Nobody cares. Um, because Putin likes to threaten nukes all the time as if we don't have nukes too, and we do, so he's not using his nukes. Uh, the Air Force, Ukrainian Air Force, said it destroyed three Russian Su-34 fighter jets today. That's a big deal. Uh, family of Alexei Navalny, the Russian uh, occup uh, opposition leader that Putin had murdered two weeks ago, has the funeral tomorrow and says that now they can't get any funeral drivers for the hearse because basically Putin's people have called all the hearse companies and told them they better not drive Navalny's body to the funeral. Um, the Finnish government told Ukraine that they can use Finnish weapons to attack Russian territory, which was a big deal. Um, that ballerina who was kidnapped by the Russians, Russian American ballerina visiting Russia from LA and like an idiot went there a few weeks ago and what a surprise the Russians kidnapped her as if nobody could have predicted that. She apparently told her boyfriend a couple weeks ago, oh, it's safe there in Russia. There is no problem with me going. Um, Russian, Russian refugees are being kicked out of Sri Lanka for throwing a whites-only white party. That was kind of stupid. And a 72-year-old Russian retired woman is facing, um, actually, she just got five and a half years in jail for posting two social media memes critical of the war that the Russians didn't like. And in Russia, it is literally against the law. One second. It is literally against the law in Russia to criticize the military, and that includes criticizing the war. Not even saying you're against the war, but saying the war isn't going well is enough to get you five years in jail. Because why? Russia is a dictatorship. So, all right, that is it for the news for tonight. Thank you guys for joining. Thank you for the... Uh, for all the gifts, uh, does anybody know if the YouTube subscribers still get ads interrupting the live? That's a good question. Don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know. That's a Google it maybe. I have no idea. That's an interesting question. It'd be nice if they basically, that'd be a great way to entice people would be to turn it off. Thank you, Jeremy, for the gift. Let, let's do a quick look. One second, just for fun, because I'm curious too. Um, let me see here. One second here. Um does i think they call it subscription does youtube subscription turn off ads it's youtube premium though that's different that's not the same thing this isn't youtube premium no this is youtube premium i'm talking about a subscription which is different they're not answering the question so there we go yeah, they're not answering the question. I don't know. I don't know. Sorry, wish I had an answer for you, but they're not giving a good answer. Terry, is you okay, Terry subscribe and still gets ads. Because that would be a nice way to do it, would be to say, and frankly, you know, we could we could turn the option on and give up more of our money. Like I give up another 10% or 15% to let the ads be turned off would be nice. Yeah, but this isn't YouTube premium. This is subscribing to my feed to give me some income. And it's too bad they ought to give us a way to say, yes, as a thank you, we'll turn ads off. Because it also is just another incentive. It, it's a nice, it's a gift, but it's also a nice incentive. But no, they don't, they, don't get, they don't give me that power. But it's a nice idea. Yeah, sorry, guys. Sorry. Yeah, we almost, all right, well, we're going to, all right, we'll hang on TikTok until we get to 100,000. All right. TikTok, keep hitting that screen. I'm going to, we're, we're waiting for the hundred thousand likes on TikTok because we're at 96. So somebody just mentioned it. I was like, all right, Jeremy, I'll, uh, I'll hang it. Although, although it's probably like the opposite incentive. If I say I'll hang until you click, then people are going to be like, okay, don't click and have him stay. <laughs> oh, it's going up now. Thank you guys. 90 here. I'll click too. There we go. Oh, does it let me click my own? I don't even know if it lets me click my own. Oh, almost there. 99.8. Almost there. There we go. Thank you, guys. Thank you, TikTokers. All right, guys, I'm going to go. Um, see you all tomorrow. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for the gifts. Uh, make sure to check out, if you are one of our Discord people, 
Make sure to check out the Discord stuff. Like I said, there's a number of really cool things. Also, oh, I forgot to show Larissa's. Remember, we've got Larissa's uh, necklace she made uh, by hand, a traditional Ukrainian necklace that Larissa, who's a Ukrainian-American artist, made, again, by hand. This is a copy, a duplicate of one in a, a Ukrainian museum. She basically duplicates a lot of the really cool old traditional jewelry. Um, so that is up for, she very generously donated it for the auction. So that is up there as well. So do check it out. Um, and there you go. All right. Lots of fun stuff at the auction, discord.erevosis.com. Thank you, Irene, for the lights. Thank you, Jen, for the rose. All right, guys. See you all tomorrow. All right. Thanks, Jen. See you all. Thank you.